Hello and welcome to the Key Stage 4 Mathematics Curriculum Information video. Uh, my name is Mr Kyle Lewis, I'm the Head of Mathematics uh, at GFS. So here we have an equipment list which is shared with students at the beginning of each year. Um, it is important uh, that students do bring everything on this list as any, at any time during a lesson uh, they could be required to use uh, some of this equipment. Um, it's especially important to bring a scientific calculator, one of the Casio calculators works well, or the Class Whiz. Um, they will be required to use one in both of their papers for their exam, so it is important that they get used to using them within the classroom first. Um, and also a file which I've added on at the bottom just to store any assessments and QLAs which will be um, used for revision for students before exams. So here at GFS, we use the Oxford AQA exam board. Um, the grading system is one to nine, and we have two tiers of entry, which is core and extension. Uh, the core and extension are very much like the foundation and the higher tier uh, that other exam boards use. The core tier is not the same um, as the core maths program which is run um, as a level three alternative course to um, to students who don't wish to take AS level. So when students get their certificate at the end of year 11 after they've sit, sat their exam it will not stipulate which tier the students have sat. If a student gets a grade five at core and another student gets a grade five on extension both certificates will only say grade five and it will not say whether they have sat the core or the extension paper. And here we have um, just a table of the grades that you can achieve on each um, tier. So on the core, you can see that you can achieve up to a grade five, which is what is classed as a strong pass. A strong pass will um, be accepted by most universities. Uh, to get on to their courses unless it is a maths course in which case you will need um, to get a grade seven and then go on to do a level maths the extension paper you can get from a grade three to up to a grade nine now if any on any of these tiers you uh, achieve less than what is required to get the minimum grade um, on core that being a one and on extension that being a three then it will just be a U grade and ungraded. We will always recommend for students to go on to the tier which will um, provide them with the best opportunity of attaining the best possible grade. So if the core uh, tier is the best chance of your child getting a grade five or a grade four then that's the tier that we will recommend. If, you're, if your child is exceeding that grade five, then we will uh, recommend that they sit the extension with the hopes of getting a grade six or higher. So for both the core and the extension tiers, students will sit two papers at the end of year 11. Uh, both papers are equally weighted and permit the use of a calculator. Uh, the extension papers are two hours each and are both worth 100 marks and the core papers are one hour 30 minutes each and are worth 80 marks. So what is assessed at uh, the IGCSE level? Unlike other subjects, um, the maths GCSE assesses all the skills learnt in year 7 to year 11 and some from even before that. As maths is a skill based uh, subject, it can be any skills um, that students have learned over their time in secondary school. The CGP guide and course textbook are very helpful if learners are looking to identify what topics they need to know. So the contents page of the IGCSE textbook has a list of all the topics uh, which, which could come up. The core tier assesses more functional mathematics skills with a larger focus on topics such as number and proportional reasoning um, and the extension tier will assess more advanced mathematics such as calculus. This is why if a student is, is wanting to take A-level maths it is um, essential that they achieve 
at least um, a grade seven at the extension level. So then they've got the prerequisite knowledge required to be successful at AS. So as previously mentioned about the tier of entry, um, it will be decided um, towards the end of year 10, start of year 11. All students in year 10 work towards the extension content. Um, and then when we start to assess students um, and do a mock exam, we will start to have these conversations uh, with you as parents and with students um, with the hopes of getting, getting the students onto the best possible tier, which will give them the best possible opportunity of achieving um, that, that grade that they need. So work um, that students should be doing to prepare for their IGCSE. Within lessons, students will be doing recall tasks. If there is anything that comes up on the recall task um, that the student is struggling with, they should add it to their revision list and that should be something that they target themselves independently. Um, the, the guided revision uh, document uh, is there for students who need that bit of extra support. If they are struggling to realise which topics they, they need to revise, that is a breakdown across uh, of all the topics across the, across the year that they can access. Um, this work is an independent uh, piece of work and should be kept in the ring binder folder at home. Additional exam questions and practice papers will be set to students, which will be required to complete. I know students do like to complete um, past papers, but as a revision technique, it is only good as a diagnostic tool um, with the hope of obviously identifying them topics that students then need to work on individually uh, to improve. So just completing past papers on their own is not an effective way to revise or to prepare for the IGCSE, uh, but it is an effective way of diagnosing where those gaps are, where the, where the knowledge needs to be improved, um, and then websites such as Dr. Frost Mass, Corbett Mass, and Mass Made Easy um, are really good for students there to take them individual topics and get them um, from areas of weakness to areas of strength. So where can you find more information on the IGCSE? Um, as previously mentioned, the textbook contains all the content um, in, the, in the contents page um, and also contains worked examples and practice questions and assessments which have been written by Oxford AQA, which is the exam board who creates the exam. The specification is also available on the Oxford AQA website, um, and this will show you exactly which topics are in court and which topics are in extension, if you want to have a look at that, and um, that's available for you on their website. So another course that we offer uh, at IGCSE is the Further Pure Mathematics. This one um, is from the exam board at Excel, and the grading system is still grade one to nine. It is still level two qualification, um, even though the content that is covered in it stretches beyond the scope of, the, of, of level two of IGCSE. So it is still an IGCSE, even though the, the content that um, is, is much, much higher. So if a student is identified at uh, year 10 as early entry and then continues to study the further mathematics course throughout year 11, um, they'll find this contains a lot of the A-level pure content. So if a student achieves a grade 7 or above in further mathematics, then this student will be eligible for the accelerated A-level programme in year 12. This means that students will study the full two-year A-level mathematics course in one year. Okay, so that's done during year 12. And then we'll have the opportunity to sit the full further mathematics course in one year again, but in year 13. We are able to offer this to these students because a lot of the pure content has already been covered and it will only be a case of topping up that knowledge in order to achieve the full A-level mathematics qualification in one year. So here is just a list of useful websites and further resources, um, exam style questions, revision papers, 
any sort of videos. There is also physics and maths tutor, which we use within class, uh, which is an excellent place for students to find um, A-level content for the further mathematics course. Please, if you have any questions, any further questions, uh, drop me an email. My email is at the beginning of this video, um, and I hope that you've got all the information that you need.